Hey guys, Panzer J back here. Uh, we've reached the conclusion uh, to Operation 20 Core. <clears throat> it ended on turn 20. So I think um, if you guys have watched any of the uh, uh, other recap videos from the game, um, it's been pointed out this was the longest game we've ever played. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I think that can be attributed to, honestly, I think um, each player in this game um, played the nation that they actually play the best, uh, in my opinion. I think that uh, Bruce, um, his strong suit is Japan. Um, I definitely believe uh, the UK Commonwealth is uh, uh, Pete's strong suit. Uh, Rich does a great job with Russia. <clears throat> Uh, Hambone, he's kind of <laughs> he's kind of the master, as other people have said. So uh, he kind of uh, his forte is really everybody, I guess. And then I like to think, uh, I guess uh, German Germany and Italy is is kind of what I'm best suited to play. So I think that had a lot to do with how close this game was and why it went so long. Is um, you know there wasn't a lot of mistakes, and you know when everybody's pretty much um, playing um, the nation or faction that they're the strongest at playing, it's going gonna, it's gonna to translate into a good game. So I think that was really um, a big factor in why uh, it was like nip and tuck pretty much the whole game and, and why it went as long as it did. Unfortunately for Bruce and I, <clears throat> it ended maybe, or it went maybe a turn or two too long. I think we had three turns in a row, 17, 18, and 19, where if the game would have ended, it would have been an Axis victory. So, but it wasn't, it wasn't meant to be for us. Um, so, uh, definitely like to congratulate everybody who played. Um, I know, um, the other guys have been very complimentary in their, in their, uh, in their words, um, about uh, the other members of the group. And I definitely, uh, second that, um, not really any grave mistakes, I don't think. Um, and again, everybody just played really well. Um, and it's a fun group to play with. Yeah, no, uh, no animosity or no, uh, you know, no, no issues really um, that cropped up. I felt sorry for my partner, Boston Bruce. It seemed like uh, everyone was ganging up on him. Um, the allies were definitely flooding. The majority, I'd say it was probably about an 80-20 split, it seemed like, for the last part of the game there. Um, everything going against Japan. Um, you know, only maybe about 20% of what they were producing um, was going against Germany and Italy. So, um, Bruce definitely had his hands full, but he played a great game. I mean, um, Japan still has a, a kick-ass Navy, and... Um, you know, they got a bunch of ground forces. They're still holding on to Nanking and Tokyo, obviously. So um, Bruce definitely made life difficult for the Allies. And that was a big reason why um, we hung on um, to the lead for as long as we did is because of Bruce's play. Um, <clears throat> as far as what I was trying to do, I did. I had taken a couple of probably about six months total off from the game and had missed the last two YouTube wars, so maybe I was, I, I felt like I was uh, maybe a little slow out of the gate. Um, I definitely got to um, give props to Pete for his defense here in France. Um, he, he built Paris up really strong, and then he had also built up, I believe it was Normandy, was his other um, strong territory. So I just kept looking at the numbers and I was like, eh, one more turn. Let's, let's get one more turn of production in before we go to war with France. That turn would come and go, and I'd be like, ah, I don't know if I like these odds. Let's wait one more turn. So I did that for a couple turns in a row where maybe I should have went a little earlier, and I, I kept putting it off because I just didn't think that I had enough juice to take uh, France, whether I went Paris or I went for the surround. Either way, uh, Pete had built up a strong defense. So I was, I was like, really worried because the worst thing you can do, even worse than delay, is to go in in France and not take it on, on, on the turn you go in. That's like, <laughs> you might as well just end the game right there. It's like, it, that would be a death knell for the Axis. So I, 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 I kept waiting, 
like I said, probably two turns longer than I should have. Um, just because I was so worried that I wasn't going to be able to take France with the numbers that were that were lined up there. So um, that was kind of um, what I'm talking about when I when I kind of got off to a slow start um, with Italy. You know, now that in 4.2 you get a factory down here um, if you take Abyssinia. So I thought that was going to be extremely beneficial. I thought that was going to be a big time positive for Italy. So I was pumping a bunch of money into the factory down here in Italian Somaliland. I don't know. In the end, honestly, I don't think it really it helped a whole lot. Um, I think Pete mentioned in his video I had maybe upwards of 15 units and and I still got wiped out fairly easily. It's just, I think that it's really, even with this the factory now that you get to put down in Italian Somaliland, I just think it's it's so difficult for Italy to project any kind of power, you know, outside of the Met. It just, you know, you just can't you, you just can't reinforce this other than for the factory itself. And if you cut off the supply path and you don't even have that, then you're down to just putting colonial infantry down. So um, I'm not sure how I would play Italy differently the next time uh, I'm Germany and Italy. I'm not sure I'll put as much down there. I just I don't think I you know got enough return on the dollar to to justify that. Um, I did try something a little different. I moved the Italian Navy out of the Med. Um, I know uh, Pete talked about the uh, you know just having a fleet if you're like Germany here in the Baltic, um, it projects threat to Russia and the United Kingdom. And you could say the same thing here with Italy. If you keep the Italian Navy intact here, at least it ties down um, British naval units. And, you know, then Italy can break out if, if, if uh, England gives it an opportunity. But I don't know. I just, you know, pretty much every game, you know, Italy just sits in the, in the mad here and they either get wiped out or they sit in port all game. So I, I didn't want to do that. So I thought I was trying to think outside the box. What could we do with the Italian Navy? Um, and that's when I thought, well, let's bring them out here. And then depending on when Italy goes to war, let's see what we could do. Possibly we go into the Indian Ocean and help back up the Japanese. Um, maybe even, I even thought about landing here in, in India when Italy did actually, um, go to war. Um, maybe combine in a sea zone here in the Indian Ocean with a big Japanese fleet and create like a super Axis fleet or something. Um, and help uh, Japan um, with the UK Navy until the US got into it. Um, also, obviously, I did end up coming down here and taking Cape Town. Um, so I liked having the Italian Navy outside of the Med in the sense that it gave me a lot of options, and it was still projecting threat, right? Uh, my mistake was well, when I brought it over here to um, South America... <laughs> I, did, I didn't learn my lesson, and I, I put the Ita Italian Navy in port, and then the territory fell, and I lost all those ships. So, <laughs> so I, I should have left the Italian Navy out of port and forced the U.S. to fight a, uh, a pretty big naval battle. And I'm not sure Hambone had enough naval units that he could have taken the fleet. Or worst case scenario, at least I would have taken out a, lot, a bunch of U.S. units. So that was definitely a mistake. But I like them being over here. Once I got over here, if uh, Hambone hadn't come down on that turn, they were going to make their way around and up this side of South America, um, land here in uh, Peru maybe. Um, well, actually Ecuador I was going to land because it's empty. I was going to land in Ecuador and, and just and cause more problems and tie down um, some allied naval units. But like I said, the problem with my strategy was that big mistake there to, to put them in port. If it wasn't for that, maybe I would have tied down some allied naval units a little bit longer and, and given Bruce a little bit more of a breather. Um, but down here, I saw the opening for Cape Town. I think Pete just had a single infantry there, if I remember correctly. Now, I only had a couple of units, but I did have a, I had a couple of shore bombards. So and I figured, let's roll the dice if, if we get lucky. And I take Cape Town. That's going to be a major blow. But again, it just it was a question of Italy. Just there's there's no way really to reinforce anything down here. So it's going to take a few turns, but the Allies are eventually going to take it back. But um, it was kind of a cool move. Something I don't think I'd seen Italy do before. So 
I liked that. Um, then late game, I've got to give Bruce the credit. He's the one that thought of the rail bombing. Um, strap bombing <laughs> is definitely not my so strong suit. Um, uh, maybe I should incorporate that more into my game. But Bruce is like, why don't you get a, a strap bomber down there and we can bomb the railroad and take away that point from the Allies. So I'm like, okay, let's do that. So I lend lease the strap bomber, got it down here. But then I'm like... At that point, I was down to just Cyrenaica for territory. So I'm like, well, if I lose Cyrenaica, I have no place to land the Strat Bomber to keep bombing down here. So I've got to support Cyrenaica as much as I can. So on the turn, I brought down the Strat Bomber. I brought down the Italian Air Force. And then on the German uh, turn, I immediately brought down like uh, eight more aircraft, like three jets and five fighters. Um solely so that I could hold on to this territory. Because I knew if it was just left up to Italy... Uh, the Allies would have came in and wiped it out just to be able to take away that landing spot for that Strat Bomber. So I brought all that German aircraft down so that um, I'd be able to hold on to Cyrenaica there. And I held on to it, you know, for the rest of the game. I mean, it, it, the Allies, they would have lost, you know, I've got a bunch of ground units, a ton of planes. I'm not even sure it's, it's possible for the Allies to take it. So uh, that was good. And then Bruce and I thought of, you know, adding a second strap bomber because once we saw the Allies were going to start building, uh, you know, railroads going in different directions here, uh, one strap bomber wasn't going to be enough. So we got that second strap bomber on the board. Uh, besides that, I obviously wanted to make sure I held on to Rome. Um, but the Allies really never threatened uh, Italy. So uh, Rome was pretty safe throughout the game. Um, as far as with Germany, so um, I wanted to. <laughs> I'm still looking for the turn for the game as Germany where I can capture Moscow or or at least get Lebensraum and get the three cities. You know, <laughs> every German game, I that's always my primary goal. Um, you know, but it just wasn't in the cards. Rich played a great game. Um, they're really strong on the on the defense. As a matter of fact, um, Pete reached out to Bruce and I and was like, "Hey, um, right when Germany and Russia went to war, he's like, Rich is in a great position. He's going to win this game. If I think he lo I think Pete lost faith in old Panzer J as Germany for a little while there. So uh, he was uh, he was he was fairly certain that Rich was on his way to a victory and." Uh, I think after maybe the second turn at war with Russia, you know, Pete realized that, well, maybe Panzer J's got it at least a little bit under control. So uh, we went in, we took uh, Kiev, we took a bunch of the southern Russian territories, we took a handful of up, up here in the north, we never took Smolensk, um, but... And, and Rich and I never came to any kind of agreement, so... Even late game, there was no German-Russian agreement where I would back out of uh, out of Russia in exchange for anything. Um, you know, Bruce and I just started talking as the game progressed, and you could tell it was going to be an Allied victory. I mean, um, Rich and I were beating each other up on the Eastern Front, and um, and the Allies were kind of free to do what they wanted, and it was definitely going to be an Allied victory. So we talked with Rich and just said, "Hey, look, um, you know." The Allies are going to run away with this if, if, if we're not careful. So on my own, I just decided to kind of back out of Russia. Um, mostly because, again, um, I, was, I was spending so much of my income on units in Russia. And if we're not actively fighting each other, then those, those units can go to the defense of Western, Western Europe. And then the second thing is, if Rich isn't devoting all his production to, to fighting me then that gives him a chance to, you know, maybe be a thorn in the ally side. And that's what he started doing by going down here into Iran and Iraq and then over into India. So, again, it was there was no explicit agreement between the two of us. It was just, it just was common sense to kind of pull back from each other a little bit and, and, and concentrate on the allies a little bit more. So that was the plan there. I did leave these two big army groups here in Poland. So not that I thought that Rich had the strength to go into Romania and Warsaw, but that is a two point, that's two victory points for him if he takes those two. So I wanted to make sure he couldn't get those. So I left those two big army groups there 
um, just guarding the approaches to Warsaw and uh, Central Romania so that so he couldn't really um, threaten either one. Um, so that was kind of my thinking in Russia. Although the interesting thing is, is if the game would have went beyond turn 20, on turn 21 you would have seen Barbarossa part 2. So what I was going to do is, so I had bought and positioned six paratroopers, uh, what is it, three jets, no, seven jets, and three fighters here in West Germany. So the first thought by doing that at the end of turn 20 was that on turn 21 maybe threaten London or, you know, at least southern England, right? Draw some allied attention away from Bruce a little bit. Not that I was going to be able to hold London even if I took it, but it would have just been a cool thing to, to take London even just temporarily. But then Pete went ahead and put all these fighters uh, on maps, so I really couldn't have you know, successfully got through the screen and still attacked London. So then I started thinking, okay, well, with that possibility down, what can I do with all these units? What can I do with this huge force here in, 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 on the Eastern Front? Because Bruce and I were stuck at seven points. So we needed, we needed to get points somewhere. So where are you going to get points from? Um, you know, Italy was definitely not going to get any of its uh, strategic objectives. Uh, London, like I said, was a no-go as a victory city. Obviously, Washington is completely off the table. So the only place I could get victory points is in Russia. So I was going to do Barbarossa Part 2 on turn 21. I was going to take this stack of 15 infantry and this armored force, which is right here in Warsaw, and they were going to come up here to southern Belarusia, which is undefended, and be adjacent to Smolensk. Then these 15 infantry, along with those 13 advanced mechs and those three medium armor in uh, Warsaw, were going to come up into western Ukraine. Again, it's empty and be adjacent to small uh, Kiev. So I would have two huge armies adjacent to two Russian cities. I was then going to, on that same turn, take the seven jets, the three fighters, the tactical, and the six paratroopers and come one, two, three, and attack Leningrad. Now, Rich has, by my uh, count, uh, two AAA, four infantry, four militia, a medium bomber, he's got the fort. So if I would have taken it, I would have had to take a bunch of my planes, but he's really not in a position to take it back because all he's got really up here in the north is infantry that only can move one space, and he's at least two spaces away from Leningrad. So if I would have taken Leningrad on turn 21 with this huge air force in West Germany and be adjacent both to Smolensk and Kiev, Lebenstrom was a possibility at that point on turn 22, and that would have given us two more points. Now, uh, Rich does have a, a, a decent force here in Aral Kursk and definitely a strong force down here in southern Ukraine, but I'm not sure fighting through, here's 15, 13, that's 28, and three more, that's 31 units that would have been in western Ukraine. Up here, it would have been something like 25, so I'm not sure that he would have been able, he might not even have attacked either stack or been successful. So that was kind of going to be my plan going forward if the game had went one more turn. But unfortunately for us, uh, it did not. Um, as far as my defense in Spain and in Western Europe, it was it was pretty easy. I mean, the Allies never attempted anything. I mean, Hambone kept building rockets here in England. Clearly, that was to bomb airfields, probably in West Germany and in Paris, so that I couldn't have scrambled to defend uh, the coastal territories when they when they tried Overlord. Um, but you know, I've got I'm I'm fairly strong right through the coast here, and that's because they never attacked. So so I just kept. I kept being able to funnel units into the Atlantic wall without ever losing anything. So I'm not saying that they couldn't have made a successful landing somewhere. Um, France is pretty secure, maybe here in Belgium or the Netherlands. Um, but I think it would have taken a bunch of units to land. They might not have had much left, so I probably would have pushed them right back out. And they might have just had that one shot and that was it. So, um, But I never felt any pressure. They never really applied much. If anything, to me, they saved all that, unfortunately, for Bruce. In Spain, same thing. I took Spain as late as I could, you know, 
as far as um, leading up to the variable die roll ending turns. And then I just piled everything really for the most part in Madrid. Again, they could have made a push. Obviously, you're going to take the territory surrounding Madrid very easily. But then Madrid itself, as long as it didn't get surrounded, would have been a pretty tough nut to crack. But again, I never had any pressure in Spain, so um, didn't have any worries there. Um, thought maybe they'd come into Southern Europe here. Yugoslavia was pretty well uh, undefended for, for most of the game there. Um, but like I said, I think they had other fish to fry. Unfortunately, Bruce was on the receiving end of that. Um, and that's really it uh, for the Germans. Um, I Pete did touch on how I did try, you know, some convoy raiding and tried to build up. <laughs> and again, that was out of my comfort zone, build up a little bit of U-boat fleet. That That's actually, now that I think about it, that's actually another reason besides Pete's um, strong positioning here in France Another reason why I kept delaying was because I put more money into U-boats than I normally do, so I didn't have as many ground units. So that was another factor. And honestly, I think Pete gave me too much credit. He handled me very easily in the, the Battle of the Atlantic. My subs didn't do shit, really. So um, I, just, I just feel like... Um, I mean, it's not a waste, clearly. I mean, the game before Hambone convoyed uh, Pete terribly and was extremely effective, but I just, I didn't combine the right techs, I guess, with uh, the U-boat war, and it was really, it, it petered out. I, I didn't, I didn't get enough return on my investment whatsoever, so uh, I'll have to reconsider that for the next time I'm Germany, but um, that was another reason I, I, I planned on, you know, convoying and hopefully crippling the, the British economy, but I mean, there were a couple turns where I took, you know, I don't know, six, eight, nine bucks off him, but he quickly recovered and and probably the last at least eight turns of the game, there was like basically no U-boat threat whatsoever. Um, as far as uh, Hambone and Pete's strategy, I was a little surprised they didn't put more into uh, going after me here in Europe. Um, I think... Uh, again, I mentioned it was probably about an 80-20 split in terms of what they were spending in the Pacific compared to the Atlantic. Um, so it, it was pretty obvious, you know, several turns ago that Bruce was going to feel the brunt of the Allied onslaught. So um, I just kind of, like I said, I kind of just sat back and, and built up my defenses and just watched poor Bruce uh, get uh, ganged up on. But I like the Allied strategy. Um, I like the island hopping they did. Um, they had two big fleets, one British, one American. So the British would move on their portion of the turn. The U.S. fleet would follow suit so that by the time Japan went on the next turn, it had two huge fleets to uh, contend with. So um, neither the British nor the U.S. fleet was ever alone. So it really never gave Bruce um, the opportunity to pounce, even with all his uh, heavy battleships and stuff. Um, I know he mentioned he did consider like uh, late in the game like uh, an all-out attack on the combined Allied navies, but um, and I think he did say that he comes out with the win, but it cripples pretty much his entire fleet. So that was really good coordination on Hambone and Pete's part to you know just always have their navies together in the same sea zone by the time the Ger the Japanese turn came around. So. Um, that was good. Also, their defense here in India, uh, Pete never really, Calcutta was never even in danger. Even now, with these Russian forces coming in, by the time they are in position to take Calcutta, Pete will have that, would have had that well secure. I don't think the Russian units would have been able to take Calcutta. Um, saw the cooperation be with the CCP in Japan to wipe out the KMT, so... I think that might have been the first game I've seen the KMT completely wiped out. So um, at least it gave Hambone less to less to do on each of his turns, I guess. So uh, you could look at that as, as something of a benefit, I suppose. Um, but the the Allies played a really good uh, Pacific campaign. Um, I thought maybe uh, Guam here would hold, but. Uh, Hambone uh, played a good final battle there. Maybe got a little bit lucky with some of the die rolls, and um, and that f fell, and that was kind of really the end of the game. 
Um, as far as these Vichy ships over here, I was trying to encourage uh, the Allies maybe to attack Vichy, and then all this stuff would have turned German, so I was leaving this stuff over here so that, you know, to help out a little bit, Bruce out a little bit, maybe add those handful of... Uh, at that point would have been German uh, naval units to, to the Japanese Navy. So, But the Allies um, never fell for it. Not that I thought they really would. You know, They're both really smart, experienced players. They're not going to you know, turn all those units over to the Germans. And that's really it in a nutshell. Um, uh, again, I want to compliment uh, everybody on a good game. We are going to be getting into Operation Big Red 1 here in um, a couple of days. i got to tear all this down and set everything back up. So hopefully you guys enjoyed watching. I appreciate you guys um, watching and following along and, and commenting on, um, uh, on the turns, pointing things out that you know maybe I've overlooked or you know, asking questions about, hey, why'd you do this? Or what about this? Um, keeping me on my toes. So appreciate that. And hopefully you guys will be watching Operation Big Red One. Um, I, Bruce and I are going to be teaming up again. He is going to be the UK, France, and I'm going to be the United States. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and hopefully you guys will tune in and we'll get that kicked off in a couple days.